We're on page 186. There's a plague that's been sweeping the whole world. Not just the Jewish community. But when plagues sweep the world and then hit the Jewish community, so then it's getting late because if that if that ghetto that Jews like to create is afflicted with plague from the outside, then yeah, things are, are in bad shape. <clears throat> the Torah is very clear that when two people who are married to each other don't get along with each other, there is a mitzvah. It's one of the 613 mitzvot to divorce the person that you can no longer live with. It's a prohibition to stay with that person. It's forbidden to make the life miserable. It's not okay to, in fact, at a moment in which a husband and a wife have made that decision emotionally, they're forbidden from being together at all. They cannot touch each other, they cannot hug each other, they cannot, it's, they're, they're officially in a place of, we have to fulfill one of the 613 mitzvot. Now, um, this is not one of the 613 mitzvot that we always, you know, we don't get married and get divorced to fulfill the mitzvah of getting divorced. So divorce is a mitzvah? Divorce is, a, is a, in a situation where a couple cannot get along with each other. They decided it's not going to work for them. I'm in a rabbanan. No, no, it's a biblical mitzvah. If a katava is to write for her a sefer kritot, a book of kritot, what, what does the word karet mean? To tear. To, uh, more right. than tear, to, literally to cut off. To, when, when a person gets karet, it's that worst well, spiritual when punishment. you're born, you make a kriya. A kriya, it's a different, one's a kaf, one's a uh, kuf. Um, but it's like the word, um, a person who eats on Yom Kippur, that soul will be forever cut off from the stem of the Jewish people. This is a, a one of the Torah says in the Severe book of it's, a, right, it's, it's literally to be severed. Now, what does severed mean? A rabbi say that if one, let's say, gives his wife a get, but in the get it says that you can't do this, or you can't do that, or I need you to do this, that get is not valid. Because if we're severing ties, mm-hmm. I no longer have the authority to tell you what to do. It's a very complicated sugya, so then how do we deal with uh, child support and alimony and things like this? This is an interesting halakha conversation how obligations toward children perhaps are not the same as obligations between spouses or okay this is already a conversation not for right now but and there's the but here I cannot tell you that a hundred years ago when the divorce rate was much lower than it is today that everybody lived in romantic beautiful loving marriages Um, in fact far from it I once heard one of my rabbis share that the beauty about today's world is you actually see a lot of couples who really like each other. That may have been a rare mm-hmm. image back in the day. To see couples that are in love with each other, going places with each other, they're seeing each other, go to a movie together. You know, that's a certain life of it's okay to love. There was a world, here, and I'm talking even in this country, a world of love was inappropriate. I mean, that's not the relationship between a husband and wife. A, a husband and wife are almost like a father and his daughter, not uh, to, you know, don't, this is exactly what the world looked like. And in fact, when many people stayed married, it was in spite of the fact that they uh, didn't get along with each other. Not because they got along with each other better, and now there's a problem that uh, that, that has shown up, and and, uh, and now we don't know what to do with this problem anymore. What's love got to do with it? Well, I, I think that's a question a lot of people ask. Now... I'm also. It's an obligation you. I, I have I have an aversion to the you know we'll stay together till the kids finish college, because I'll tell you the truth is that what a child sees at home is inevitably what they're going to reflect into their marriage in the future if they'll even get married in the future. Some children see what happened at home is that this is never going to happen to me in my life. I'm never going to give that much of myself to another person, and and not always is it the wise decision to say let me stay together because this is. This is what's good for the kids. Not necessarily, not, not necessarily good for the kids, nor is it good for you. And nor does everything that is good for the kids mean that that's what's good for you. And these are hard things to know how to split these hairs. And these are topics that bring up emotions in any couple that is married, because there's not one couple on earth that was married or is married that doesn't have problems. None one. There's nobody in the world who's living in a Hollywood romance. In fact, every movie in Hollywood always ends with a couple sailing off into the sunset. There is no movie about their married life. Because even Hollywood couldn't come up with what drama goes into a marriage when there are problems with money and there are problems with the in-laws, there are problems with the family, and there are problems with friends and a problem at work and a per- there are problems and problems are, are more numerous than the moments in which we sail into the sunset together. And that's why Hollywood doesn't deal with that part of, of uh, life. It always ends with a couple getting back together with a, you know two people sitting on a boat somewhere. It never ends with oh look what marriage looks like. When I said it only gets hard. 
the next morning when you wake up. That's when all the problems begin. You know, the same guy who was always opening doors for his girlfriend, for his fiance, but now he's the guy like, open your own door. Would I have to open the door for you? Well, overnight, what happened? Now we committed to each other, and that's it. Uh, it shouldn't be that way, but... Uh, you should still open the door. I still do. <laughs> oh, okay, what's that? When to make decisions is difficult, and there's always important for a person to have someone to go speak with, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a rabbi, it could be a competent other person, but competent is the key word in this conversation, because people who are not competent or who try to project their values onto people who don't share the same values, um, they just create more problems. And that's, I can't, I can't stress it enough, competency. It doesn't make sense who and where and when, but someone who's competent. The chances are your friend is not the competent person, and your your uh, old roommate from high school might not be that competent person. There's somebody who is known for their competency. Competence? Yeah, competence. Yeah. English, yeah. Yeah. English. Yeah. So, that being said, there was an old school character trait which had value to it. Now that you know that I have a version to the let's stay in this until the kids finish college. There was a famous dance that our rabbis used to do, a song they would sing when they were dancing in front of the bride and the groom. The Talmud says they would dance and they would say, Matza Mutze, Matza Mutze. That was a weird song. Did you find or are you finding? Did you find or are you finding? And uh, our rabbis say that they would dance in front of the groom. That's the night of his wedding. He doesn't even know this girl, especially not in uh, Talmudic times. Barely knows her. Maybe he met her uh, a few times. And they ask him, Matza. They're referring to a verse that says, Matza isha, matza to. I found my wife, I found good. Is that who you found here? The lady you sitting next to you, is that her? You found goodness? Or, Motze, you finding. Motze anita isha mar mi mavit. I find this woman to be more bitter than death itself. Oh, God. <laughs> Which one is it? There's no Rabbi Kiva Eger. He writes in his uh, letters that about the rabbinate. His job as a rabbi. He writes, I find the rabbin to be more bitter than death. I mean, it would be better to die than to stay a rabbi. Uh, the, the question is asked, I mean, a few questions are asked. First off, is this the right venue in which to ask a guy about his marital problems? You know, you're dancing at him with him in his wedding. Two, what does he know? He only, <laughs> it's the first 20 minutes of our life. What do you want from me? And I once asked Dr. Pilates this question. 20 minutes? Half an hour, I don't know. Are you dancing at his wedding? What does he know about her? She looks good in a white dress. That's all he knows. What does she know about him? And he wore a nice suit. The groom? The groom and the bride. Yeah. They're asking them. So Apelos told me the difference is, how, what can he answer? <coughs> is Matza or Mose? Did you find or are you still looking? Did you find or are you finding? The person at a certain point makes a decision. The decision is, listen, this may not be perfect. But then again, what really is perfect? What really is? Oh, who, who, what is perfect? But the bottom line, this is where I am. And so, matzah, as long as I'm not being, listen, there are, if someone's being abused, I was getting beaten, I'm not talking about that kind of scenario. Things are tough, there are problems. Matzah, but I made a decision that I found already, I'm not looking for anything else, so I'm going to work this out. Or motzeh, motzeh is, I'm still looking, meaning, like half the world. I'll marry her, but if a nicer person comes along, I'll get divorced and marry them. And then you find people that will go out to uh, coffee with their secretary, they go on dates with new people at conventions they went to. That, and don't think this happens just outside of the Jewish community. There was a Pesach hotel here in San Diego that I went to go visit recently. And I walked into the lobby of the hotel. Now these people are mostly not from San Diego. I don't think anyone was actually from San Diego. And they are planning to come to this place with all, you know, it's free, nobody knows me. Not. And how do you know who's a married couple and who isn't a married couple when they're sitting in the lobby or they're sitting at the bar? is the people who see a person who looks like me and they cringe or hide, that's not a married couple. Married <laughs> couples don't hide from me when I see them at the bar. And people who are married to other people and are hanging out at the bar, that's who's a nice kippah, it's a nice head covering, there's a nice skirt and bulletproof Why? stockings. But Why would anybody go to a Pesach retreat without their spouse? They're with their spouse. But their spouse is with somebody else. It's almost they're the reason... Swapping. I'm not telling you about a problem. It's a real problem. I'm not a fake problem. I don't talk about fake problems. Fake problems are for, for the movies. It's a real problem. They had their families that go together all the time. And I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about the East Coast versus West Coast, Israel, America. I saw this in, in many communities. In Israel, I saw terrible things. They actually plan these trips together, at least the two weeks out of the year that they're happy in their life. It's almost incomprehensible. 
But where do five to six figures? How do we reach such places? We reach such places in a world where rabbis prefer to talk to you about the laws of kitniot on Pesach and what kind of beans you're allowed to eat on Pesach versus, you know, what is a marriage all about? For every devout Torah, you know, we had Rabbi Kalandar here the other week and he spoke the whole time about marriage. For every rabbi that's ever come to speak anywhere, you could, if you got paid for everyone who came to speak about halakha, came to speak about the weekly parsha, came to speak about topics that are highly irrelevant to anybody's life. Versus how many people talk about raising children? There are real problems with raising children. Like, you know, there's no book that tells you how to raise children properly. So there are problems inevitably. How do you deal with children that are rebelling, with children who are... Do how do you do... What about spouses? Marital harmony. Where's the rabbi that goes around giving shulim on how to deal with your in-laws? That's, that's a real problem. It's not a fake problem. Whether you eat rice on Pesach or not doesn't really make a difference. But if, if there's a constant disrespect between you and your mother-in-law, you and your father-in-law, and they're putting you down, you're putting them down, your spouse is caught in the middle, that's a disaster. That the Torah has answers for it. But nobody's talking about it. And so guess what? So now we have people that will, God forbid, they won't eat rice on Pesach, but on Pesach they'll have, have someone else's wife. We have to talk about problems in order to fix them. And I notice, and, and there are things that are hitting closer to home, than others. I notice these are problems that exist. I don't have the answers to all these problems. And, and nobody has the answers to all these problems. But as a community, there has to be the taboo about talking about real problems has to go away. Because if we don't address them, then nobody's going to find answers to them. And then you're just going to have a problem that keeps going, keeps going. A divorce rate in the United States that's past the 50% mark. Way past the 50% mark. 85% of couples in the United States have reported that they are emotionally divorced from each other. They live together in the same way. 85, not 85%, is, that means 15% of couples actually are happy together. It's an unbelievable number. I almost feel bad talking about uh, the laws of brachot right now. This is something that has to be spoken about. And the question boils down to, am I still looking or have I made a decision? If I've made a decision, then Everything can be worked out. Even if it can't be worked out, it's also working something out. To know who we are, to know our problems, to know our flaws, to know. You have to be real. Abin Abraham is going to tell us now that the people who are humble, Hashem commands the humble people, Bikshu Anava, keep searching out for humility. This is Abin Abraham, but they're already called. The phrase seeking humility is surprising considering that they are already called humble of the earth. Understand the depth of this. They shouldn't be satisfied with their current level of realization, and they should keep looking for higher levels of closeness, of anava. In a marriage, it's the same exact thing. My father at my wedding told me that marriage is like riding a bicycle. If it's going smooth, you're probably going downhill. And it's sad, because what do you mean, I always have to fight? It doesn't mean fight, but it's struggle. Struggle is not the same thing as fight. Struggle means we're molding each other, we're molding our life. I have to change things, you have to change this, we're giving up. The, uh, we're also accomplishing things. And if you're a couple that's in great, great shape right now, don't expect that it's going to last like that forever. Constantly search for more ways to keep... You know, I'm Islam. There's a built-in program of couples separating and getting together and separating again together. And the Rambam, our post game suggests half the reason of this, aside from the spiritual reasons to it, is to never let a couple say, I'm bored of my spouse. I, I got used to it. Don't ever get used to the person you're living with because you're stuck with them forever. So don't get used to it. You know, when you hear old Jewish comedians, especially in this country, half their jokes were about marriage and how bad marriage was. Which tells you, by the way, that even though people weren't getting divorced, their marriages weren't so great. Because when you hear how people laugh, you know that it's a, a laugh of a discomfort, not a laugh of, oh, that's funny, I never experienced that in my life. I can't remember one of these uh, Jewish comedians. He shared a joke, uh, the guy's in his deathbed, and uh, he smells his wife baking his favorite apple pie. And so you know, he's about to die in a a few hours, the doctor gave him it. He says, would you mind giving me a piece of that apple pie? He says, I'm sorry, that's for the Shiva house, you know. <laughs> and when you hear this joke and we laugh but it's, you know you might actually have couples that are literally just waiting for the other one to drop dead because I don't have any other way to get out of this this is just the way we're going to work we're, we'll be roommates till then that's a, that's a disastrous state of affairs it doesn't make a difference how old the couple is how long they've been married go on a date with each other still 
go out with each other, do some, talk about something, try something you've never tried before. The Torah suggests things like this. There's one aspect of humility, though, which is mortality. When you realize that time goes like that, every minute with your spouse becomes very special because you just don't know what tomorrow is going Who to be. Who knows how long we have? Yes. That's correct. And that uh, it's an illusion to think that, oh, I need stimulation. So, I mean, of course, it has to be a dynamic, Absolutely. interesting relationship, but you have to constantly be entertained. But I'm talking to both spouses. I, 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 I dislike yeah. rabbis who always blame one spouse. You have to do this, and you have to give it that. He's not a doormat. She's not a, a carpet. You know, it, it, they both have to be in this together. But, but, the bottom line is, I'm what I'm saying, with any midah, with any character trait, comfort is the worst place to be in. When you're comfortable, you think that you've passed that hill, you've, that's the worst. When you think, ah, Hashem, I have nothing to do tshuva for, probably you're so deep in Havilah that you, you can't even see the tshuva you need to do. Havena, bimlo'o, kol ma shebiyat al chaper kazeh, vekaimehu bechefetz lev, ushkida kiyaot lo. Vuhu itale yazor lo mish chafetz lechet bedarech anala azot. Vialehu bemadrigot amigiyot alav, kmo shtemar, yedrech anavim bemishpat, vinayel anavim darko. Understand everything that I've explained clearly in this chapter and strive with the effort and care it deserves. Hashem will assist those who desire to follow this lofty path and will advance them through its stages which lead to His presence. He leads the humble justly and teaches the humble the way to Him. I think this is the bottom line. When you open up the Torah, you open up the Chumash, and you see Hashem says that He created human being, Zachar um keva barat. Hashem created man and woman, male and female. Literally, Hashem created two different species on earth. They're not the men and women are not the same species according to the Torah. We're, it's like giraffes and elephants. We're, we're mm-hmm. animals, but we're not the same. That's true. And the more we understand that, the more we realize that. So, from all the other species in the world, I'm going to find one person that it should work out with for the rest of my life. The probability of that is impossible. For the billions of people on earth, I'm going, to, I'm going to randomly walk down the street with the right person that I'm supposed to be with that's going to work out with. Rather, the Torah tells us. That Hashem blesses Adam and Chava. That without a Kadosh Baruch Hu, it's not going to work. If I'm not trying to be with a Kadosh Baruch Hu, if my relationship doesn't include a third party of a Kadosh Baruch Hu inside of it, the chances of it working out are little, it's miraculous. They say in Hollywood, if a marriage lasts longer than a bottle of milk in the refrigerator, it's a successful marriage. The reason why that's true is because how do you want a person who has no no objective value system to know how to stay there? I don't blame a person. But we who have a Torah, we who have a Hashem, we have to say, we both want to make you happy. We both are on this path together. We don't know what to do. The truth is, we have no idea what we're doing. We're, we're guessing. We're like blind people in the darkness. But we're asking you, Hashem, to guide us to the right place. When we're not comfortable, and we're constantly open to working on ourselves. And we put Hashem into the equation. And Hashem, I also want to work with you, because I, you, you're the one who can light up this world. Then you have a chance, and then the world can look like a beautiful place. Rabbi Nabam is telling you with any character trait, don't get comfortable and don't divorce Hashem from the equation. Always have both of those. You should know, even when couples can't stay together and things end, there's also a way to do that. There's also a way how to do that in the Torah. There's a way, there's not a man that I know. When he got divorced, until this day, I've not heard one bad thing about him, about his ex-wife. He has things he could write for you, a three-volume book. But he doesn't say, because things were told to him in confidence when he was married, things that are not anyone's business now that they're not married, and he'd rather people call him and curse him and make fun of him than to stoop down to the level of sharing someone else's secrets that were told to him. And whenever I see him, I tell him, you know, I don't see him so often, but I say, you are the example of how a person says, you know, it didn't work, it didn't work. We don't have to spend the rest of our lives dragging each other through the mud. Just show him his life. He makes sure every Friday that his kids call his ex-wife. She's busy running around town saying things that, but he doesn't doesn't make a difference. Call your mother, call your mother, call your mother. His son, always. Dad said I have to come visit you. Dad said I have to be here for Britain. Dad, it's a good thing. You're gonna go down the books of history for being a good person. There's also a way to end things. There, there, Hashem has guidance on how to end things. But when we take a kadosh book out of the equation, we're lost. Why? Because we don't know how to do it. And so this plague that is plaguing the world of of. It's not anyone's fault. Just relationships don't, they don't happen on their own. We need to work on them. It's time for us to start talking more about the things that make people uncomfortable, but really give people something relevant to think about, because it really doesn't make a difference what you eat or don't eat on Pesach. You don't eat bread, we got it. 
aside from that, it would be so much more valuable to know that Pesach is a time that you and your family look forward to. You're celebrating together. That Pesach is a home where, where uh, the kids want to be there and the parents want to be there and the Seder table, no one's dreading the Seder table. No, that's the point. That's the whole point. I'm sure that we'll reach that place together.